It's news time. Information is power. We current. The news headline. What Inamdekano wants IPOB members to do before October 21st. The leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Inamdekano, has asked his supporters ahead of his trial slated on October 21st to embark on uh, prayers and fasting on his behalf. If I need you for the lead council of um, now, they cannot disclose this in a statement, saying that according to him, the IPO members may therefore proceed on dry fasting ahead of his trial on October 21st, which is Thursday very soon, which he expressed confidence to win. He therefore also debunked that um, rumors going around about the freedom of Mazin Abdekano towards the, uh, uh, like being uh, flown out of the country and given some documents for him to be released, amongst others, that all these things are actually rumors, and everyone uh, that are truly IPO members should disregard it and uh, be certain that the agents of darkness will not win over them, saying that there is no need to uh, panic ahead of the 21st of October 2021 because all hands are on deck, saying that victory is actually certain for this day because. The uh, lawyer and even Mazin Amdekan himself were amazed about the social media uh, quotas and headlines making round about his freedom, saying that this is actually falsehood, and saying that 21st of October was sacrosanct and it will remain so, compelling the fact that the authority had actually you know, uh, delayed the process up to this, uh, this moment, but more strikingly and commendable is the solidarity that the IPOP members have been given uh, Mazin Abdekano, of which he has said that he actually appreciates their efforts and conduct over time. The fiat granted by the Honorable Chief Judge for Oyedu Mazin Abdekano's case to be heard during the court's annual vacation or even shortly afterwards, that ostensibly because they have no case because, uh, against uh, in Abdekano, and that is why they are prolonging this case as this, and the lawyer saying that he was quite disappointed. However, they have no hiding place come 21st day of October 2021 as the uh, case was earlier adjourned. And the lawyer, while interviewed, has uh, said that uh, Inam Dekanu has no case. I will give one example with the United Kingdom where the House of, of Lords in such a case that where a defendant in a criminal matter had been brought back to the United Kingdom in disregard of available extradition, extradition process and in breach of international law and laws of the states where the defendants can be found, the courts in the United Kingdom should take cognizance of those circumstances and refuse to try the defendant. I know that Kanu's case is unique, novel, and presents matter of first impression. Yet, it is uh, it, it presents a golden opportunity for Nigerian courts to determine whether it is lawful for the Nigerian state to make an extrajudicial attempt on his life in 2017 and having failed to then pursue him to Kenya and then abduct him to Nigeria without due process of law or because he is engaged in self-determination, which is a protected political opinion, but one which the government of the day is seeking to suppress by means of punishment or some assault. If what they did to Kanu is legal, why did they resort to the extradition processes of Benin Republic, and why is America equally applying to extradite Abakiari instead of simply leaving extraordinary rendition on him? That is the cross of the matter. And it was asked again that the UC is known production in court by the DSS in recent legal appearances as a vindication of your statement or prophecy as it were. He replied, let me put it this way. Democratic Nigeria has never had a successful treason trial. Since 1960, Democratic Nigeria has had many treason trials without any, except for that of Obafemi Awolowo, netting a conviction of or even coming close. No other person has ever been convicted of treason or its guarding varieties like treasonable felony or sedition throughout all the democratic dispensations in Nigeria. Even when that of Awolowo resulted in conviction, it immediately brought many issues that still dog Nigeria to this day. Plus, Awolowo's conviction most probably would, have, would, have, would not have happened had he not overconfidently opted for summary trial when he could have tarried a while. 
What is more, his trial was later found to have been tainted with profound judicial bias, and in quick time, his conviction and sentence were commuted. Most remarkably, his conviction convulsed Nigeria to no end, especially Western Nigeria, and it ultimately contributed to the 1966 coups that directly led to the civil war and its horrendous aftermath. The lessons from this are not hard to see, and their first treason is a regime-specific political offense. So, unless the trial is dubiously concluded during the life of the extant regime, it sunsets with the coming of a new regime. Second, treason trial, if pushed too aggressively, can bring more problems than it initially set out to contain. In some climes, it led to overthrow of the very government in power, such as in the case of Jerry Rawlings, who went from being in jail for treason to overthrowing the government that jailed him. So, Nigeria needs to tread with caution and a keen reference to history as it ramps up on this overly aggressive treason trial of Mazen Amdekanu. When an alpha patriot like Kanu gets so upset with the system that he begins to seek solutions in separation or self-determination, you talk to him, you don't subject him to trials and tribulations. Simple. And these were the words of the lawyer, and he was asked the very last time, you know, after he had said that, uh, you know, the, the, the question was, that at a particular point in time, he said they cannot try uh, Kanu in court, a court in Nigeria, and why was it so? And he was just trying to explain that that was true because... Uh, uh, because he was actually extradited from Kenya unlawfully, because he, 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 and uh, they were not supposed to bring him from Kenya without following due process. And for that reason, any other prosecution that they had against him, you know, because he had jumped bill, and not that he jumped bill, they actually went to his house to invade his house and, uh, you know, attempted to kill him. That was extrajudicial. Uh, with respect to this, he had to flee out of the country. And for them to bring him back to, the, to Nigeria, it has to follow due process. And for the fact that he didn't do that, then... On a normal time, like on a normal basis, they were not supposed to uh, charge him. And then um, for some reasons that is subjudized, as I said, he had to file a case in the court in Abuja, which is still uh, pending. And then um, they were like, do this, it, 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 was, it was also asked if, he's, if he sees his legal appearances as something that would vindicate him, just like the earlier statement that he has made. And he said that truly, any treason uh, in the democracy uh, system, is always inconclusive. He said, I said for the case of Abafemi Awulowo, which was actually having, you know, some instances like it was not even supposed to be concluded, but because he was actually uh, too overconfident that he asked for a summary trial, which, uh, which actually made everything quite fast, that made him convicted. If not, it wouldn't have actually occurred. That when it comes to treason, one has to be very, very careful, citing the case of Joe, uh, Joe Rowling, uh, who at a particular point in time, Jerry Rowling was... He was being jailed for treason, and at, and, and at the time he was he was freed, and he later became, uh, you know, he later became the president. So looking at history, it is better to seek solutions in separation or uh, self determination cases rather than, uh, you know, subjecting people to trials and tribulation, especially in the case of Mazi Inamdekanu. Thanks for listening.